Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of The Doug Geyser Show, brought to you by the Ashland University Journalism and Digital Media Department. I'm Kid Krakus, and I'm joined by the head coach of the Eagle football team, Doug Geyser. Coach, thanks for sitting down with me here today. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kid. So when taking a look back at that first game against IUP, what did you guys take away from it? Number one, I would say our kids played extremely hard and played with great effort, and that's kind of been a hallmark of this program through the years. So it was nice to see that carry over, number one. Number two was we made too many, too many mistakes, uh, self-inflicted wounds. And when you play a perennial top 10 team on their field, you've got to be on point and you can't beat yourself. You've got to make them beat you. So those were the, probably the top two things that, uh, that came to mind right away. So obviously you have the game itself, but when you guys left and went back and were able to watch film, was there anything that stood out to you? Number one, I'd say our special teams played tremendously. We did a great job with our coverage units. We made a lot of plays on the punt team and the punt block team. Uh, return team was very solid, so we put a lot of time and effort into that portion of the game. So it was nice to see that pay, that pay off, and it added added confirmation and credence to the players as well that we're on the right track. Yeah, when taking a look at this past loss, I mean, what was the locker room life lock, like locker room like after the game? Well, the players were exhausted, which is the way it should be. They left it on the field. Number one, though, was kind of a resolve that we let one get away. And uh, so I think kind of redoubling that and correcting our mistakes, worrying about us first and foremost, is, is first the focus of the, you know, as we're starting practice this week. And then we're, then we're on to Ferris and getting a chance to, uh, you know, game plan what they do and practicing against the things they do. Yeah, when you game plan heading into that contest, what went well for you guys? Uh, the special teams, number one. We, like I said, we put a lot of time into that. Number two, uh, defensively, I thought we got a lot of pressure on their quarterback, which is, which we've got to do. He had got a lot of accolades coming into that game, and we, we didn't, you know, we didn't let him be in, in peace, the, you know, during the whole game there. When he, was, when he was dropping back, he was under duress. And so that was, that was really, really good. Defensively, I thought we flew around very, very well, um, with the exception of probably the third downs. We didn't do a great job on third down conversion to get them off the field. You know, we're pretty solid on that side of the ball. So. Yeah, when you look at both sides of the ball, what were some standouts that you have? Uh, defensively, I thought Jackson Myers, and we will be on the show here later today, I thought he played like a captain. And I had talked to him in the offseason and challenged him to raise his game. And, uh, you know, you can't replace a Mike Ayers, but you can, you can, you can be, do the best facsimile. And I thought he did a tremendous job at the Mike position of stepping up his game and being, being a force. Yeah, when you take a look at some of the coaches from this past contest, did any of those stand out to you? Coaching-wise, um, the, co the, st the staff is the, the staff, and they work their tails off in, the, in that respect. Uh, if you want to look at it, you know, Tim Rose is one of the best defensive coordinators in the country, no matter what level of football you're at. I thought he had his guys prepared to go in there. Um, it's always hard to go into a first game when you've got a lot of turnover on a team and a new quarterback. So I thought he did a good job of kind of anticipating where the, you know, IUP might go with the new quarterback and how they're going to incorporate him. And that, that showed up during the game. You talked about some areas of improvement for some certain players and just sides of the ball in general. Are there any mm -hmm. coaches that you're looking for some big improvements from? Uh, yeah, they just, I mean, overall, overall, the whole staff, more than anything else. That, and we've got to make sure that we're always looking at, are we putting our players in the best situation possible? Are we prepping them for what they're going to see? Are we asking them to do things that they can do? You know, those are the things we always try to keep in mind as we're game planning. So it's not only just a matter of you're game planning for your opponent, you're also playing to your strengths as a team. And so and that's on the coaches to make, you know, put, those, put the players in those situations. I think, I think they've done a good job in that leading up to the second week. Yeah, when you take a look at the upcoming contest against Ferris State, number one team in the country in Division II level, what is that looking like for you guys? Ferris is, you know, shoot, two-time defending national champions, preseason number one. They're number one. They come off a big win against Mercyhurst. So they are what they are. They are what they are. They're going to be sound in what they do offensively and defensively. Uh, they've got good, good football players as well, returning quarterback. They're going to be big and physical on defense. So you know what you're seeing there. So it's a matter there of, hey, we're going to prepare for what they do, and we're going to play to our strengths. And we're going to work to correct the problems of and the mistakes from week number one. And that's Kind of why I like playing up and playing good football teams initially is you get exposed in a hurry. You find out who you are and who you're not. You find out what the warts are. You find out where your strengths are, and you can play to the, play to the strengths, improve the mistakes and the warts, 
and then you know you put, put your best foot forward to, to play the number one team in the country. Well, Coach, I appreciate you sitting down with me, but it's time to take a, a look at another piece of your team. Next up, we'll be joined by standout linebacker Jackson Myers to dive in depth into this past game and what he saw unfold on the defensive side of the ball. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm joined by linebacker Jackson Myers. Jackson, thanks for sitting down with me here today. Yeah, absolutely. Great game this past weekend. Some may not know, but for starters, what's it like being that captain on the defensive side of the ball? Um, you know, being a captain on the defensive side of the ball is, you know, taking roles that a lot of people don't, you know, see uh, behind the scenes and, you know, just giving motivation to the young guys and, you know, my, my teammates that are on the field with me at the same time. Yeah, and this past weekend you were able to find yourself in the backfield an awful lot, getting a lot of tackles. I mean, what was that like for you and what helped lead to that success? I think what helped lead to that success was, you know, the preparation that I took. Um, usually I wouldn't watch as much film as I did, um, but, you know, I watched, you know, Luke Keekley and other linebackers in the NFL this summer talk about how preparation is a big part of their success, so I took that very seriously. And so taking a look at the loss happening, what was the locker room like after that? I think it was just, it was kind of like a, a salty taste in our mouth just because we knew that, you know, we were the better football team and that we made a lot of mental mistakes. It wasn't necessarily us getting beat, but just making mental errors was the biggest, you know, downfall for us. Yeah, and how do you correct those vibes and bring the team back up, especially being one of those leaders? You know, just showing positive vibes at, at practice and, you know, um, just keeping the energy up and, you know, giving, you know, the young guys motivation that, you know, we're still, we still have a whole season ahead of us and things like that. Yeah, when taking a look at the coaching staff, is there anyone who stood out lately, especially in camp, that has helped you to get to be where you are now? Definitely Coach Rose. Um, you know, Coach Rose is always about giving everything that you have. And then Coach Geyser about, you know, just being a leader in general. Uh, he's always been in my ear this whole camp, um, even in the winter and, you know, in spring ball. They've always been in my ear talking about how, you know, you have to give everything you have, and then uh, that's about it. Yeah, moving forward, I mean, what is your guys' feeling uh, when it comes to Ferris State? You know, Ferris State is a, a very good football team, obviously a two-time defending national champion, but um, like Coach Rose has always said, nobody in the GLIAC has beat them like we have. Um, I think this week we need to take a lot of, of time to watch film, um, to understand exactly what they're doing. Um, but, you know, on both sides of the ball, if we, if we play our, the way that, you know, we can play, uh, we shouldn't be too worried about that. Well, Jackson, I appreciate you sitting down with me here today. Yeah, absolutely. When we return, we will check in with Dominic Orsini to dive deeper into the play of the punt team this past week against IUP. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm along with Coach Orsini. Coach, the punt block team was on fire this past week. What really led to that success? Yeah, so uh, you know, special teams all across the board has been something we've been emphasizing all the way back to spring ball. So um, you know, coming into this game and in all phases of special teams, we really wanted to execute at a high level. So looking at punt block specifically, you know, the big thing we talked about was being physical, being aggressive with the punt block. And I think you know, we saw that with the two punt blocks this past weekend. Um, and it was really nice like going back, uh, emphasizing that in the springtime. It was really good to see all across the board special teams you know, really play at a high level there this past 
last week. Yeah, and how do you continue that momentum? Because having such good play from your punt block team isn't really a normal thing. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we have one, everybody's going to be preparing for that now. So continuing harping on, a hey, we're the aggressor in this unit. We want to be physical. We want to be fast. Um, and just putting a great plan together with the players, you know, week to week. Um, I think it's kind of the key going forward with, with that pump, uh, pump block unit there. Yeah, and are there any specific players that stood out to you? Yeah, so, you know, just looking at this past week, uh, Isaac Brooks, you know, he's a speedy guy coming off the edge. He's also on our field goal PAT block unit as well. Um, you know, he's the guy coming off the edge, and, and again, he's got the speed. Uh, he's got the aggressiveness in him, and, and again, he was the big player that led to the pump block that led to our first touchdown, you know, this past week. And you're also involved in the recruiting game. What did you guys do this past offseason in preparation for a good year this year? Yeah, so, you know, in recruiting, we, we try to dominate the state of Ohio. And I think we do that year in and year out with the top recruiting classes that we bring in year in and year out. So, um, you know, we did that this past year. And, and with that, you know, you lose key guys. Um, all across the board and what we did this year too was we went out and we kind of filled those missing pieces in with key transfers and, and I think that's kind of the big goal for us going forward is yeah we're going to recruit the best out of Ohio but we're going to fill those those needs like you know quarterback linebacker defensive line you know we're going to fill all those needs with great transfers that have played at this level uh, to give some of those younger guys a little more time to develop there and, and get within the system. Yeah and you talked about dominating the recruiting battle but what is that process actually like like what goes on behind the scenes? Yeah absolutely so I mean, it's, it's definitely a long process in recruiting. It goes all the way back to springtime when they're juniors, uh, you know, initially talking to them, kind of getting them on your big board and really evaluating them throughout their senior year um, in terms of what they do. And then after that, you know, we usually are bringing in a handful of all state guys, um, you know, guys who played in the state finals and, and things like that. But it is a long process. But, you know, we got a lot of top guys on our board right now and looking for another really successful 23 recruiting class. And now back to present day, I mean, when you look at this Ferris State squad, how do you continue guys to have success? Yeah, so, you know, Ferris, obviously a great football team. Um, you know, kind of hearing what Jackson was saying in the last segment, uh, you know, it's what screwed us last week was mental errors, you know. So I think going forward with Ferris, um, it's a football team that we're going to really have to be sound against, um, you know, be physical, be fast on the defensive side of the football. Um, but again, it's, it's more about us and, and playing within our system than really doing anything with them, you know, this week. Well, Coach, it was a pleasure sitting down with you yeah, today, absolutely. and uh, good luck against Ferris. Yeah, thank you. Now it's time to wrap up the show with Coach Geyser as we take a look at the current season standings and the rest of the schedule. Coach will join us after these brief messages. You're watching the Doug Geyser Show on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show on AUTV. Coach, it's been great to talk with you here today, but before we go, let's take a look at the current standings and what we can expect in the coming weeks. Okay. First off, as we take a look at the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, are there any takeaways you have from some of the other teams in the conference and what we saw week one? Well, I'd say kudos to Tiffin and to Walsh opening the season with, uh, with a win there, and uh, it looks like there's about eight other teams in the same situation we're at, you know, and trying to um, correct those mistakes and trying to come up with a win in week number two. Yeah, that's going to be a big thing is bouncing back in week two. And now taking a look at the schedule, the usual motto is take it week by week, but are there any contests you've circled? Uh, for me, I'm going to give you the standard coach speak. I mean, we're on to Ferris State. I mean, that's, uh, that's the only thing that's consuming us right now. And, uh, you know, that and kind of correcting the things we need to correct and get ourselves back correct. Coach, I greatly appreciate your time here today. And are there any final thoughts for the audience out there? Well, I would invite everybody to come out to our home opener this, this, uh, this next weekend and see a great brand of football. Uh, the Ashland Eagles taking on the number one team in the country. Where else would you rather be? Exactly. That was today's episode of the Doug Geyser Show. With the Eagles falling to IUP this past week, they're looking to build momentum this coming weekend against Ferris State on Saturday with kickoff set for 7 p.m. Tune into the game on 88.9 WRDL to listen 15 minutes before the kickoff for the pregame show or watch live on the JDM streaming channel with the game brought to you by the students and faculty of the Ashland University Journalism and Digital Media Department. You can also watch repeats of the game on AUTV and the Valley Sports Great Lakes channel. I'm Cade Krakus, and we will see you guys back next week on the Doug Geyser Show.